Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thanks uh, uh, for the invitation, of course, and uh, for doing a wonderful job in organizing this program. I've already been an insane amount of work, um, and uh, you know, I've been working for it. I'm um, actually the bit about the weather. I don't know what you guys have done, but I have not been a lot of work to arrange that for the um, weather for most of the duration. We go with, with connections. <laughs> yeah, I, I was wondering, you know, if you guys would like to answer. I feel that that's the soul of the world soul or something. Anyway, uh, yeah, so this is work in collaboration with a lot of people. It's bits and pieces and traditions from students. Uh, my dear friend, my colleague, uh, which I'm talking, and uh, what we said here. Uh, I'm sure I'm forgetting some of them. And uh, the topic is uh, something that I already talked about a few times. So apologies for those of you who are first part of this story. Uh, and now, of course, I'm going to flip my Click on the last slide. Click on the last slide. OK, that's the very good. OK, so I stole this quote uh, from a talk that, uh, in fact, was uh, given by uh, Michael Berry uh, at INI, um, the precursor of this of this meeting, uh, and I like it so much that they will ever just uh, reproduce them. Okay, so you can read, of course. Uh, the gist of it is essentially uh, with Ellington saying something like, uh, you know, do theory, don't care about anything else. You know, you want to know how uh, God's uh, God is thinking, and Robert Hooke. Uh, it's got exactly the opposite viewpoint to some extent, saying, well, you know, forget about the, the food of the brain and the fancy, just look at the uh, uh, phenomena. So this talk is going to be about uh, hopefully a hybrid between the two phenomena and some maybe quite fancy, perhaps, uh, in the words of Robert Hooke. Uh, Albert Einstein, uh, Einstein was not really honest here, okay? If you look at his uh, biography, he has uh, investigated the uh, uh, phenomena very much. In fact, he's got even a patent on refrigeration and, uh, and designed uh, a propeller for uh, airplanes for uh, helping the war effort. That was World War I, of course, and uh, apparently he didn't work too well, by the way. Anyway, so... Uh, yeah, uh, so here's a flight of time to some extent. Uh, all these again, don't even know this by far, but if you want to model a continuum, uh, somehow you have to come up with uh, uh, mathematical assumptions or postulates, if you're going to want to call it that way. And typically, okay, so you have some regional space occupied by your medium with the forms and the time. And so you establish immediately mathematically, you're thinking of this information as a map. Uh, time map. And uh, immediately also you have to define what happens to you know, the container, the boundary, the medium has to be somewhere. And uh, it's convenient to think about uh, uh, the uh, uh, domain occupied by your continuum as an open set, uh, which has, uh, and of course, you want to, to have your map continuous, at least until things break up. And uh, uh, this by uh, also the fact that uh, you don't want to lose particles or points in the continuum. So you want this map to be invertible. And if you look at what continuity means in terms of open sets, essentially you want, uh, at the end of the day, uh, the fact that uh, uh, the map has to uh, be from open sets to open sets, which means that the boundary is, has to be mapped onto itself. This is actually verbalized uh, um, in, uh, in the fluids, uh, referring to waves, in terms of, uh, you, you find it in books saying that, oh, uh, waves at, uh, at 
particles on, 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 a, on a wave surface stay on the on the on the surface for all times. Okay, and this is the mathematical solution for, for this if you if you will. So the map doesn't have to be invertible for the boundary. Okay, so that's that's interesting because it has consequences. So I, again, this is a uh, really explained uh, not too often in books, but this book actually does that rather I admire. Um, and this is a, a thought experiment. Okay, so you have a say a blade going through the free surface of a cup of water. Okay, and uh, the question is, what happens to the boundary? Uh, between let's say air and uh, and uh, and water and the boundary of course metal with the rigid object and uh, and uh, and the boundary of the fluid. So it's natural to assume that the rigid object is a closed set, okay, and the boundary is being basically deformed to the power of this this uh, this uh, closed set. And when you go through completely. Then there is a problem into the for instance, right? There's a problem of uh, of uh, connection. You, you actually change the connection of your of your uh, uh, continuum. But there is a way to rescue that by again the fact that the uh, boundary can be mapped onto itself by simply assuming that oh, no, no, the boundary actually stretched and is still hiding the the object. It goes back. And yes, now it's a reason it's mapped onto itself on a segment, but so what? It doesn't matter because uh, this is possible and it's a fictitious boundary, if you will. On the other hand, this already in a, in a nutshell is expressing the concept of a wink for things moving through the fluids. So it's kind of interesting to see that uh, the consequences of this in stratified fluids, for instance. Okay, so stratified fluids, suppose that these are two isolines of constant density of the fluid that intersects, say, uh, a boundary at the bottom, okay? And uh, yeah, so these two points are on, uh, clearly on the on the uh, boundary, and so they will have to stay there according to uh, the assumption of the postulate until the map that governs the motion of this fluid is continuous, yeah? And uh, what happens to these two Material surfaces. Well, if you have this is a material surface, so uh, I cannot map it onto itself. I would violate uh, this uh, invertibility. So what happens is something may very well uh, drive these two points toward each other, but then uh, they won't be able to detach from uh, from uh, from this uh, bottom. Okay. Whereas in the other case in which you actually have a boundary for the free surface. Okay, so this row was air, just like in the thought experiment of uh, of Mayer. Uh, yeah, so we will actually end up with the fictitious segments, and uh, nothing would, would be violated. So this has consequences in terms of how do you actually detach this uh, away from the bottom? Because you know that if you have a density lighter on top of the uh, Heavier fluids, somehow this thing would, would have to be equilibrated, right? And you can't until you have this restriction. So the only way is to use regularity of the map, essentially, at some level, mathematically, okay, to actually have what you observe uh, in the words of uh, Hook, right, in a phenomenon. You know? Okay, so this is a setup. Uh, okay, so uh, just to illustrate, because so, so Roberto, does it mean? Does it mean that the two sides sometimes it's like getting the two sides of this uh, finger to overlap and then it cannot overlap? Yeah, yeah and then it... because otherwise you avoid, avoid this invertibility. So then so how you create this somehow, somehow right here there should be some sort of loss of regularity of the map. Mm -hmm. And then then the physics becomes a little bit different from then on. So you would have to restart your map uh, because now you lost the uh, uh, Invertibility, continuity, etc. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So there's something that has to happen in order for, for this to be passed. And just to illustrate the concept of a uh, uh, material surface, right? So what you see here is an example we did a while ago about uh, there's a bar, okay, in this part of a, a very viscous fluid, which is uh, dyed so uh, with fluid dye so dark that you actually can't see through it. So you cannot see the ball coming, 
but you see it when it crosses this interface between the lower fluid, which is a slightly denser, but still very viscous. And, uh, and then you can see that uh, this material surface is being dragged around the body. The body is being hugged, just like in the schematic of the mayor. And, uh, and uh, this material surface doesn't really collapse onto itself, which is not the case if you have, if you watch the uh, uh, dripping out of a uh, faucet, for instance, right? You know that there is a, there is a, at some point there's a pin toss, okay? And there is certain tension that playing a role here. There is no certain tension of this fluid. It's just two, uh, same, same fluid, just slightly different density by adding salt. The details are in this data, so it doesn't matter at this point. Okay. So, having set this up, I also kind of set up the uh, game, if you want to call it this way, about uh, uh, doing some analysis on uh, on this type of issues. Okay, so it's going to be stratified fluids. It's going to be um, more uh, like two uh, set uh, different densities separated by a thin interface, just like in the case that uh, I showed before of the experiment. And uh, then uh, you have equations governing this motion. Uh, unlike the case that I showed before, you can ignore uh, viscosity, okay, uh, under some assumptions. For instance, if you're dealing with water, viscosity will take a while to get into uh, interaction. And uh, also, a diffusivity of your stratifying agent. Okay, again, all diffusion processes, either momentum or density, uh, are going to take a while to get uh, excited, so you neglect them. Okay, so and zero is here, and all is this. So these are all our equations, stratified our equations. What can you do with this? Very little, because even in 2D, um, yeah, so you have to use a computer to do to do dynamics, uh, even a certain initial condition. Of course, this is a stratified uh, stable equilibrium that you expect to see. Okay, so towards the end of doing some analysis, uh, you might want to uh, look at a uh, slightly defensive, perhaps. Uh, what structure do these equations have? They have a lot of structure. In particular, that can be uh, given homophonic structure. I like this homophonic structure by Benjamin because uh, it doesn't really uh, work with potentials, which are non measurable quantities. Okay, so it works with velocities. This is a sort of weighted velocity by density. And the density itself. Okay. Of course, you see, oh, what is this? Well, this is spin <laughs> function, but it's only a placeholder for the velocity square. In fact, so this is a kinetic term. Okay. And uh, the homophonic structure is canonical with a bracket. And uh, uh, <coughs> this is the bracket given by an operator, a prime operator. The bracket is right here. Uh, you start checking for. Uh, is it really a bracket? Well, and the symmetry has to be satisfied. Uh, and the whole construction goes through beautifully, according to Benjamin, except one thing that is not commented in Benjamin, which is this, okay? So if, uh, if you remember the schematic of two isoline of density intersecting a boundary, that means that along the boundary, the density is not constant. And in order to, for all the construction to go through, you need density to be constant along the boundary, which is, perfectly reasonable to assume if you think about your start from equilibrium conditions and you deform inside, well, the density at the boundary will not change precisely for the reason that I have that I given, given to you. But I can, in principle, devise a situation, an initial condition in which the boundary is actually not constant, that the, the density on the boundary is not constant. And at this point, this is no longer a bracket, okay? So that tells you that uh, so, boundaries- Now I'm yeah. a bit confused. Sure. I'm, 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 I'm doing my best, actually. <laughs> 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 yeah. so is, is this, so the, the function of space, uh, F and G are two functions of rho and yeah. thing, right? Functionals. Yeah, yeah. Right, so yeah. Is, this a bra two. is this a Poisson bracket? Yes. So, so you can- But you then can, how, how is you not symmetric? You can check, uh, you know, uh, Jacobian entity, of course. And the skew symmetry. Yeah. So why, why you cross out the skew symmetry? Because when the density is non-constant- Oh. Okay. Okay. It's no longer oh, true. Oh. And it's no longer true. The very basic, before you go to Jacobi and all that, right? It's not even anti symmetric anymore. <laughs> so it tells you that it's crucial to have a density constant along the boundaries for this construction to work. 
Okay. So in uh, other words, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a symptom that if you start intersecting boundaries, okay, or working with boundaries, you have you have more work to do essentially. You have a problem. That sorry, a silly question. So this is this because when you when you calculate a bracket, you you do some integration yes, bypass yeah, and then absolutely. the boundary absolutely. plays a role and then boundary you, terms that you don't you, you don't get an care. extra term you can absolutely. get. Okay. So the mechanism is yeah, exactly that. Mm -hmm. So you might say, Oh, okay. is there any way that I can rescue the whole construction so, by introducing yeah. I, I, I just recently was on a conference and I heard a talk about internal waves mm -hmm. where the distribution of boundary was uh, it, 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 of, uh, of density was continuous and they claim uh, I can I can actually pay for the thing uh, that uh, the there is a Hamiltonian principle and uh, for some brackets we describe this situation even this continuous distribution of, of the, the, the continuity of the continuous is not an issue yet the continuity is a bound along the boundary but okay, if the density you have around the continuous distribution, you have boundary because you have two liquids of one, with one density and another density. Right? Sure. sure. And that well, is you, you might. I mean, this this is actually continuous density uh, stratification, but you can restrict it or map it to uh, the row, in other words, here. Okay. It doesn't have inside the fluid column, doesn't have to be continuous. Okay. So you can, you can do that. In fact, this is part of the exercise of. Uh, there is no assumption of uh, strict assumption of continuity for the bracket in uh, in, uh, in 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 okay. So you can actually do two layers, but the point is the layers okay intersecting the boundary is what causes this from 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 the the disease actually. So I was going to say right, uh, you can introduce the rest of this. You have to augment your bracket definition. With fields that live on the boundary. Okay, and then you might be able to pull it off. And there are attempts in different settings for this to work out, but not as far as I know, not for, for, for the boundary and the bracket. Okay, so fine. So uh, still too difficult to do anything with uh, with continuous stratification, uh, even with a with a uh, homogeneous structure. So right, you have a homogeneous structure, you can check the numerics uh, much better than if you can even have that. Uh, because we have conservation and then uh, in the structure provides extra extra help in devising the actual pneumatics if you wanted to. Uh, but okay, so simplify further. And, uh, this, uh, um, okay, so simplify further by now using two entities separated by an interface. Okay, so now you have two other problems coupled by continuity uh, of pressure, for instance. <laughs> Boundary conditions. Okay, so can you do something with it? Not much. Uh, so we we'll have to do asymptotics. Asymptotics, we are okay. I don't need to go into the details of this. Uh, you develop uh, asymptotics without assumptions on the amplitude, provided you have long wave. So horizontal scales uh, for anything are much larger than the vertical scales. And that allows you to get away with uh, no assumption on the amplitude. Okay, which means you can have an amplitude so much that you actually intersect the boundary again. Uh, right, and so you get uh, this kind of equations. I don't really need to dwell upon it. Just the fact that there's dispersion now in the, in the popping out implicitly. Of course, there is dispersion in the other equation, but it's not like it's manifesting itself immediately. Okay, so in this case, you actually have this kind of Dispersive terms because of the long wave assumption, they're actually small, formally small, uh, the epsilon square, epsilon being the ratio of uh, uh, vertical to horizontal scales. And okay, so what can you do with this? Uh, again, not too much. I mean, you can find closed form expressions for traveling wave solutions, for instance, that's, that's useful. But in order to do an article type revolution, you really need that uh, computer again, more or less. So simplify further. Uh, I know this is contrary to the theme of the workshop, <laughs> and uh, uh, what can I say? <laughs> I feel this direction, okay. <laughs> and now you have two uh, equations, uh, sand amount, uh, uh, whatever you want to call them, airy, okay, channel water equations, coupled by what is uh, the interfacial prices, okay. So 
it's very simple now. I mean, it doesn't get any simpler than this in terms, in terms of being a hyperbolic system of not a depression. Still, what uh, about question just yes. to actually understand? So, you have two layers of complexity. And uh, when you assume the motion, one layer is uh, uh, you know, oh, yes. those yes. Those yes. so yes. there is a virtual participant in a sense. Absolutely. Yeah, it's actually the same. Absolutely. You remember the, the structure of uh, our bending, right? You have this greater vorticity, right? It was one of the two variables, the Hamiltonian variable. And that is exactly what, what happens if you do the one layer. You get a, a, a delta function support and delta sheet with the weight. Yeah. So this this variable here, this one, you see it? Uh, this one. Yeah, this is exactly what is with with rho in there. So if rho has, you can imagine, like if rho has a heavy side type, you know, uh, depression, as soon as you take that, right, you get a delta function, right? And that's how we get the uh, so, uh, vortex sheet. Yeah, very true. Anyway, so, uh, uh, okay, one more simplification to throw away the density of the upper layer fluid. That's a kind of air type situation, air and water. And if that is true, namely rho one is taken to zero, this gradient of pressure is zero, which means the pressure is constant, which is exactly what you have in water waves, right? For the air part. So the pressure is constant, it's constant over the surface. And so the momentum equation is finally uh, just this for the lower layer fluid. So you have one layer fluid, and of course, you know that that's shallow water equation. So, Robert, could you remind yeah. what, uh, what is the definition of zeta? This, uh, the... Ah, zeta, okay. I had the schematic yeah. it is here, so I went too fast. Zeta, if I'm cons consistent with my notation, is displacement of the ah, the elevation of the equilibrium. Why is that constant pressure? Because, you know, you have, in one uh, case, you have a lot of liquid, and another uh, uh, less liquid, and the pressure is the weight, you know, this thing. Yeah, yeah, but if I take, if I write the, the upper layer uh, equation, momentum equation this way, and I take rho 1 equals 0, this ah, rho one is 0, and, 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 and then you have I have Px equals 0, and then P is constant. The yeah, exactly, so it's one layer. Okay, so finally, I got I got to the point which I can do some analysis uh, because I have these equations here with a zero, right? And uh, it turns out it doesn't take too long to figure out that there are some similar solutions to this problem. Okay, so if your zeta interface shape is quadratic in X, uh, then you assume that the velocity is linear in X. And this actually produces uh, an exact solution of the equations. Um, of course, not very physical in the sense of the quadratic expression for zeta goes to infinity, but it's actually to infinity, so you will have to do something about it. Uh, and this was noticed by, okay, so I learned it in, uh, in 2002 in uh, Cambridge, Tarnoff, never heard of this guy before, uh, in a different context. Uh, Oceanical, uh, Sergei Pavilo gave me that reference. Uh, I have been working with this stuff, you know, asking everybody, do you know about this? And I couldn't believe that it wasn't known. And in fact, it wasn't. It's, it's well known, or in some communities, anyway. Very good. So these are all free to pick uh, functions of time, not free. I mean, you plug it into the equation, and out comes ODEs for the coefficients. Okay. The ODEs, so to give you an example, it is somewhat physical. Okay, I have a, a, a drop, if you will, okay, of water in between two, uh, uh, in a channel, say, top and bottom, and I distribute the initial condition of the velocity this way, so linear again, in such a way that I have, uh, let's see, positive on uh, the left and negative on the right, so this thing is initially moving towards each other, which means that this parabola that has to stay parabolic I change the, the, the coefficients a little bit to my advantage for picking this case of so dry water dry okay and it starts moving and of course what's going to happen is what you expect right the droplet will grow in amplitude and get smaller in support and so it's going to hit the, the, the top yeah except that of course it can because there is no no, no fluid up, up here. Right. But if this was 
uh, a material surface, it wouldn't be able to, to hit the top, right? Because I said stuff that is in in in, in, in on the surface has to stay with the surface, right? But, uh, as soon as I get the, to share this boundary, well, I cannot, I cannot do that. <laughs> but this can happen, of course, because I have rho one equals zero. And by the way, uh, the equations for the coefficients are Riccati type of equations, and you can solve them exactly. And this is the type of dynamics that you see. So if mu is the velocity constant, constant uh, coefficients rather, uh, then you start. Uh, Having let's see, is it true? Uh, yeah, so it's negative initially, right? And the slope, yeah, and then it goes positive because you reach a maximum and then you relax, you slump down, and you slump down in fact. Okay, and this curvature is the same thing, right? Curvature starts at some level, then gets to the peak, and then slumps down. Okay, so how do you get this initial yeah. condition? How do you get these initial conditions? No, oh, I just set it to be a parabola initially, mm -hmm. right? With a given curve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the given coefficient gamma initially, right? Oh, okay. The given alpha mm -hmm. or that slope initially, okay. and just let it go. Mm -hmm. Oh, one thing I forgot to say uh, there is vacuum here and here, mm -hmm. okay? So there's no density there. So there's no velocity, or you could assume any velocity you like, it doesn't matter. However, if you don't, you have a jump in velocity. Okay, a jump in velocity is a shock in one of the variables. And uh, you know that you cannot have shocks on a vacuum. Um, simple consequence of hyperbolic systems, uh, uh, gas dynamics essentially, okay? Uh, but these are not true shocks, okay? Because this is continuous. It's not C1, but it's continuous. So one of the two variables is continuous. And so that's not really a shock, it's shock should be discontinuous for both fields. Okay, so what's going on? Uh, well, it's a vacuum, of course, it's going on, okay? Um, it's very special. Okay, so this is the schematic, uh, you know, uh, mathematic of uh, what happens, right? So the peak, then the slump down. Just like throwing a ball up in the air, it's gonna come down sooner or later. Okay, so what's the take home message about this thing? Uh, okay, well, there are a few few considerations maybe uh, worth dwelling a little bit upon in the interest of time. I guess I will just give you an indication of how do I get to actually consider the influence of the top. Because I said the parabola can go any high, essentially, depending on my initial data, so I can slam into the top, right? And I don't want to do that if I have another fluid. And I took the other fluid not to be there, but I can restore it in a perturbative way. Okay, and then what's going to happen? Oh, uh, well, if you want to touch the top, essentially, you have to develop, lose, lose regularity again. Okay, so you actually develop a singularity in the curvature in there. Okay, so you can actually take a look at this. And uh, okay. and even if you don't have that ubiquity, if you have the vacuum, you still can. Yeah, of course. Of course. Of course. Right. Yes. So this is the influence of having another liquid that you develop this, this singularity. So you can also do the same thing with a, instead of a parabola up, parabola down, or whatever, the, the vertex of parabola in contact with a, with, a, with, a, with a lower plate. And if you have that, you have a hole in the water, essentially, okay, or a cavity. And how does it work? Okay, again, the parabola we've got to think is not physical, right? But I can chop it in a C uh, continuous way with a constant background. So I really have a hole in a constant layer background, if you can imagine doing that. And then you can let it go, okay, with zero velocity, so it can rest. And you know that the hole is going to fill up. But I said that the hole is contact, if there is a, a vacuum point, this cannot go all the way. According to the quite offensive type thinking, or God's thinking, if you will. And sure enough, this is reflected by this dynamics, okay? Uh, so you can see that what happens is the parabola is getting uh, narrower and narrower. There are simple ways connecting these corner points. Is a question, by the way. Why two corner points again? Didn't I just start with one corner point? So we have a paper about that. It's 
I also think it should be in the book somewhere, but I couldn't find it. So, I mean, apparently nobody really. So, you know, the corner points for discontinuity is higher, or point of discontinuity, whatever you want to call it. You have to move along characteristics. That's a general result in hyperbolic systems. Yeah, but the initial value problem starting from one corner point. So, how many corners do you develop? Do you fish on this corner? Do you stay with one corner? No. Okay, so I'll leave that thought alone for a second. Sure. And uh, yeah, so what happens is the parabola goes like this, okay? You're saying that there are exactly two corners. Yeah. And you can prove this for yes. Stuff, is that okay. Yes. And in fact, there is a general theorem for n field, okay, okay uh, about this initial value problem. It's kind of interesting, actually. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so uh, this is the technique of Russell uh, and uh, and uh, some of the collaborators of this today are doing all your job on it. So I've done it now. Okay, so you reach a point in which you have a verticality. Okay, and this is again the boundary mapped onto itself, which you can do, okay, because it's a boundary. Um, so from now on, you can possibly clip this and continue your dynamics because it's a fictitious boundary. There are other considerations about how fast this happens. It's all analytical, actually. You can actually have fun with it, if you will. Um, what does the velocity do? Uh, okay, so this is starting with zero velocity. Then it develops some slope. Okay, uh, keeps going steeper and steeper. Okay, and eventually gets to be vertical at the collapse point. Okay, what happens if you don't touch the point? So this is a, uh, uh, the view from far away, okay? And you can barely see that there is a grazing shot of the one of the two initial conditions which are represented here, okay? And then compare the evolution. Okay, initially they stay close to each other, but eventually the one that is close to the bottom has to stay with the bottom. The one that's not in touch with the bottom, he walks the jet and goes up. Okay, so again, this is all analytic, you can find this uh, all these type of things. Uh, uh, yeah, one thing that I want to remark about, uh, this is more general than it looks, okay? You can actually, for as long as you have a, an analytic uh, uh, initial condition, okay? And locally, this is analytic. Uh, then you can actually uh, appeal to the sheet of Alessis and, and can follow the dynamics uh, with a cascade of, of coefficients uh, for, for for the analytic part of your evolution. So something can destroy the analyticity, and usually this is shocks somewhere, okay? Uh, and okay, there are other things that I don't want to go into that are interesting about this. Um, so the bottom, the technical message is that if, I, if I'm detached from the bottom, I can actually go away, obviously. If not, I have to develop a singularity. Okay, so can this be uh, leading up to uh, some more more realistic quote unquote. Uh, so you you take this this thing is just a toy, but does it have consequences in more realistic settings? Okay. So this is a direct uh, simulation of Euler equations with two layers separated by continuous stratification, very thin but still uh, continuous, like a boy tangent type uh, transition of density. And uh, the top density is small compared to the lower density. You let the system evolve and you develop this singularity. So, what, what is this? Uh, you are in, in touch with one of the ISO lines at the top. Okay. And uh, like I said, uh, it, it can't really uh, detach. So, the system stays stuck essentially at some ISO line uh, is, is in contact with the, with the, with the top. Okay. And stays there. So the converse problem of the whole, yes, same deal, right? It's not exactly, of course, the parabola, but you can actually see the effect of right here of what I said, the parabola is predicting essentially. Okay, and uh, you can see the rainbow about the spreading of the density as a line because it's continuous density. And if you zoom in into the start that thing, you see something that is very reminiscent. If you with, were to think about two eyes lines, following the shallow water equations without talking to each other, okay? This would be what you, you, you get, and this is what the system does with some resolution you probably can improve in that. So it's very similar. So it's qualitative, but it's qualitative with a, with a, with a almost a quantitative uh, 
band to it. You have this spread of, uh, of density, as well. density because of this vorticity shift, yeah. Correct. Correct. Exactly. Exactly. So they do talk to each other afterwards. But they almost, you know, it's, it's, it's surprising that they actually, you're talking to each other is not that strong. And the picture that you get is very similar to what you get by simplified assumptions. Okay, so you want to do more, more uh, quantitative stuff. Okay, well, uh, then presumably 2D is not very realistic. Okay, you want to do 3D. Okay, so 3D with circular symmetry is a hole in the water, which is a paraboloid. Okay, uh, you have the very same self similar solution, parabola, okay, in linear in, 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 uh, in radial velocity. And uh, okay, same equations, same uh, recurrent like equation, and also prediction of time to so singular go for that. Yeah. Is this uh, Hamiltonian somehow? This uh, is ODE. Uh, I, I would say yes. Okay. Uh, uh, but I didn't really bother to 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 break it down. Yeah. So they show water essentially, right? With radio symmetry. As long as you keep radio symmetry and water and batting, that you can write it. Yeah, certainly it's conserving energy for sure. Yeah. Okay, so if you're disconnected from the bottom, okay, this is what the evolution looks like. Okay, again, these are not no longer real simple ways in the sense that the system is non-autonomous now. It's hyperbolic by non-autonomous, so the Riemann invariants are no longer there. Okay, uh, so whatever but simple ways to be able to require it. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I, I, I'm just going. You're right. I, I, it's not, you know, Riemann. Okay. okay. <laughs> Riemann constructible. Okay. Riemann and Riemann constructible. You but you have the corners. The, yeah. The, 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 on the top, you have bathroom. Yeah. 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 This is one layer. Yeah. And yeah, thanks. And uh, this corner uh, position, right? Again, position of the corners. Position of the corners can be followed through, right? These this, uh, locations. And uh, okay, so because of the Riccati type nature of the equations, you can actually find everything in the dry detail. Of course, you know that the, current, the, the uh, corners follow characteristics. Yeah, so one of the key uh, characteristics uh, is being followed by, by, by the position. So, uh, so you're basically, sorry, A. Is lies along the characteristic of the corner, laws along the characteristic. Okay, it's completely integrable, etc. It's not a problem. You can find, you can find that when a is equal to zero, it means that you actually don't have the parabola anymore. Okay, so there is collapse. And sure enough, if you if you follow through with a, with a simple mathematical type illustration, okay, that's what you get. Um, Oh, uh, direct numerical simulation of a cavity that is not parabolic because it's very hard to create a parabolic, you know, hole, right? Because well, you cannot really assign the shape. Uh, the cavity, which is an hemisphere, easier. So this is the direct numerical simulations. Uh, and again, you can see the type of things that you will expect to see based on quite expensive way of thinking. Okay, so now more quantitative. Okay, can you do an experiment? So uh, we did. Okay, uh, thanks to Dylan, I assume uh, that I did it last year. Um, so we're, we're having a balloon, okay, air balloon, right, pushed against uh, the uh, bottom of a tank. Okay, the pushing is, a, is these two struts that are pushing it down a little, okay, uh, with a ring. This is not perfectly as Really called a cap, but it's down close to it. And uh, we have the, the, the stem of the balloon attached to a, a spring so that uh, when, when we pop it, we take the membrane of the balloon out as fast as, as, fast as possible from the water. Okay, so this is what happens. Okay, so you can see the surface of the water is now seen through the water, and it's an index or refraction jump. So it's it's dark, it looks dark with illumination from the back. And uh, the membrane is done in a millisecond or so. And this is of course many, many uh, 5,000 frames per second. Um, there is surface uh, velocity 
for a spray concentrated in a thin boundary layer, which it's unstable at some level, right? So it's so crinkly, but the bulk is actually pretty pretty good, like uh, like a shape, okay? That's well defined in average, okay? And you can see again this 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 stick, stickiness on the bottom, okay? Until you develop uh, a corner in the bottom. Okay, so right now. Okay, so this is another experiment. We pop the balloon with lasers to not to be intrusive, but uh, you can also pop it with a blade. This is a, a ruler, it has a blade attached, and so you can use, you can get a sense of the dimensions, okay? It's about 10 centimeters or so diameter type of this. And this is directly in micro simulation, more or less at the same yeah, spot, cherry picking to some extent. The time of the last is predicted to be uh, to be this, and this is the time to be called collapse in the experiment. So speed run goes, so it could be all right, but this is not good. Um, sorry, I wanted to show this, but never mind. Uh, um, this this is when you are in touch with the with the bottom, and you're separated from the bottom. Right? Completely different evolutions, more or less. Um, we're not the only ones making holes in the water, digging holes in the water, okay? Um, for the Italians in the audience, you know that this is not exactly, you know, uh, uh, an endeavor that you want to get into, okay? <laughs> <laughs> or it's something that you, 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 you guys are uh, wasting your time on. Um, right, so these guys are French and they're doing an experiment with a very viscous fluid and not so viscous fluid water, okay? And this jet, so how did they make the hole? Uh, they actually blow air. And so the, the shape of the hole is not to their, their uh, choosing. Okay? These guys, uh, these are actually uh, four authors, okay? We got another kind of. What is Lee then? King Ford, huh? Lee is the fifth author. Lee is the fifth author, exactly. Yes, yes. I mean, I suppose they, they have to have some, some somebody else or else. <laughs> yeah, so they actually uh, send balls very high speed into water, and the balls are digging up a hole, a cavity in between, which is actually parabolic, parabolic believe it or not. They fit it to a parabola, you can see it here. They also have a theory to why it is a parabola, but it's very skinny, okay? And uh, okay, well, it collapses, and it collapses leaving behind. Possibly happenstance, but you know, the line of very tiny bubbles, almost perfectly vertical line, tiny bubbles. Okay, so good. So, uh, I want to last part, um, I want to I go on to something else, okay? Namely, yes, and we have balloons, yes, we try to be uh, radially symmetric, and no, we fail, okay, partially anyway. So, what happens if you disrupt the radial symmetry? All right, so now you have to keep two components of velocity for sure. And uh, okay, you have to put a gradient, right? This would be on your way to derivative, essentially. Okay. Uh, okay, still, so similar, so similarity uh, of the same type, quadratic in the, uh, in the location of the, of, the, of the surface. And uh, uh, linear for the velocity still holds. Okay, so you stick, stick this thing in. With all these coefficients time dependent, then you get ODEs, your lower. Okay, well, one simple simple case, maybe you can dig in, uh, dig a hole which is uh, uh, of uh, cross section elliptical, but of course parabolic in the, in the cavity, in the depth. And okay, so the velocity is now to, to, to be an exact solution. Uh, you have to have two components of velocity scaling in linear with this way. If you start from zero velocity initial condition also. And um, yeah, so how come a uh, uh, system of ODEs first order of recutting time? Okay, so don't pay attention too much to the, to the fact that how they're coupled and so on and so forth. What really is uh, interesting is to well, first of all, look at one realization. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Right, so the whole is parabolic and hexagonal elliptic. As with a shorter semi axis in the let's see, in the x direction and longer in the y. Um, 
copy. All right, so it's your copy. So it's, it pays to introduce recurring transformation of variables. And uh, out of the four equations, we collapse the two equations of secondary <laughs> of this type. Okay, so psi and phi are the uh, dependent variables. And it's reminiscent of uh, uh, point mass in a, in, a, in, a, in a gravity field. Okay, reminiscent. Vague results. But if you follow that lead, however, uh, you know, not very, very clear that it may look, uh, well, so you have a homophonia or actually uh, uh, energy conserved, and you see that this this uh, fellow here is like a one of the inverse distance type potential, except that it's got, of course, this dark like that. Um, and of course, the initial conditions set uh, the value of the energy. And turns out, if you if you have somebody in your team like Gregoria, tells you, oh, of course it's separable, okay? And so of course it's inevitable. Um, and then if you have somebody in your team that is uh, uh, unfortunate, uh, digging up literature because I thought, well, it's got to be something known about this. And so you start pulling strings, and strings, and strings. And sure enough, you end up with thermocrop type systems. Okay, so sure, it's uh, it's uh, one case of a non integrable um, set of equations. Okay, too bad. Thought it was new, but it was pretty good. So, there's a second concern. Part of of course, you have a uh, two degree of freedom in the Newtonian system, so you have a second concern. Part of and now you can go to town with uh, quadrature and all sorts of things which are going to bore you with. But one thing that was not done. It was looking at the consequences of all this, okay? And it's kind of interesting to start again with this bottom uh, vacuum point, okay? In contact with the bottom. Okay, so what happens is that the semi-axis, which is shorter, well, perhaps not surprisingly, gets to uh, be zero, okay, in finite time. And there's a universal type scaling for how it goes to, to zero. Okay, and it's this two third type power. The other axis doesn't really collapse to, to, to zero, actually. So you have your your collapse of this cavity is happening like in a blade like fashion. Okay, and so here's the initial cavity. Here's the uh, evolution after some time. Um, there's a interesting phenomenon that happens after some time. You have caustics. The caustics, you know, imagine not surprising. Um, here's a view of what I mean by blade. Okay, so it's much thinner in the uh, in the uh, narrower direction than the other case. So those two peaks are in correspondence with caustics. the foci? Caustics. Caustics. Yeah, but where the position is in correspondence with some foci of the leaks? No. Yeah, that would make us too. Right. These are not confocal ellipses actually when, when they when just start going down. So it's unfortunate. Yeah. 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 So we try. <laughs> yeah. You can find things that no, actually can be predicted very well actually with the of the classes. As well as this surface here, which I'm not gonna go into, okay? But the surface, of course, is a parabola getting narrow. So the, the core is, is a self-similar solution. The way it joins to the to the to the to the environment is an interesting question. Okay, technical stuff. Okay, so this is dispersive program, and I was thinking, okay, let's put in some dispersion for God's sakes, right? Um, so this is to the NMS. The, the, the easiest way to do it is to think about Madelung and interpretation of this point of view from the point of view of uh, of uh, uh, amplitude and phase and phase of uh, of NLS. So we focus NLS. Start with the uh, the equivalent. Okay, you have to take a square root of the paraboloid. Okay, and this is what it looks like at the pretty much the same time with the simplest possible approach, which is really really dumb. Namely, take Mathematica and throw it in. Okay, the NLS. Okay, and Mathematica essentially gives up its ghost. Um, at some point, and also produces things that are possibly numerical. Uh, but it's also the fact that I'm doing, yeah, semi classical type you know, calculation. So, not surprisingly, you see very similar situation as the 
as the actual pure hyperbolic system. Okay, and uh, but so that's 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 what it is. It's a uh, work in progress. There are all sorts of twists and turns that would be nice to, to examine, including, by the way, this is not the only way to get to get um, dispersion, of course, right? And oh, also I should mention the dispersion that you, if you care and didn't write it, right? In matter of variables, the dispersion that you get from, from this is well known probably to most of this audience, right? Is going to be singular if you have a vacuum, okay? You have an infinite, you know, turn off and out. So that actually is responsible for this to be not complete in contact, actually, with the bottom after a while. Okay, the velocities, oh, the velocity is doing pretty much what you expect. So there is, again, collapse of one of the velocities uh, to almost verticality, okay? And the other one doesn't really get there, okay? So you have this kind of grid type shape. And I'm out of time. And I wanted to show this because I know some of you have already heard this. This is a solution view from the bottom of the hyperbolic case, okay, showing the blade, but also being disrespectful to the whole audience, which is basically, you know, speaking at the time, everybody here. Sorry, I'm going to that, but that's the way it is. <laughs> that looks like me. Yeah, they they go <laughs> going like that. Resist, sorry, <laughs> uh, conclusions. Uh, well, take all messages. I mean, identify minimal models in the language of uh, micro there are kind of useful, and uh, there are some backbone for more, more elaborate works. This is not reasonable, okay? Uh, long wave models, which is where I started my modeling with, do not deal with. Corners, okay. They don't corners don't have any business with long wave models, that's clearly, especially this kind of collapse. But you know, they follow some general principles that probably applies to the mathematics, actually. Okay. Um, it's reasonably effective to that. That's all. all right, thanks for your attention. Thank you very much. Oh, you start your talk with the two liquids, you know, two, and then you remove one by being replaced by vacuum, and that is a very different situation because, because <laughs> yeah, because what have what 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 would change if you but but uh, but but uh, uh, Sasha, this thing was a direct macro simulation of well, this one for instance, right, of two layers, okay. Mm -hmm. So this is actually oh, granted, you know, the top layer is. Point one, it's not air. I mean, air would be density 10 to the minus three of the air. It would be incompressible. Oh, yeah, compressible. Incompressible. Absolutely. But air is incompressible, but whether or not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but vacuum is incompressible. <laughs> vacuum is eminently compressible, but air is also incompressible if you don't uh, fly at Mach 2 or something like that, right? So, you know that part, like Mac is, is, is uh, it's pretty large. You know, anyway, stop, sorry. <laughs> you know, sorry, it's not Mac. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, knows what I, what I want to ask. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, it's just yeah a comment, an observation. Uh, in in twenty fourteen with Stefano Trillo, we studied exactly the problem you. Uh, Sorry, I forgot to mention. You were. Uh, You're absolutely right. For I a different it. initial condition, though. Exactly. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. I, I wanted yes. to say that, in uh, I forgot. Thank you. This type of thing, yes, this thing, is the two D version. Of something that uh, in one D was examined by 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 you guys actually exactly because because of the uh, yeah the, the analysis, right? yeah yeah it was exa the procedure you yeah. you described so the initial condition was a different was a continuing yeah, and uh, and regular initial right. condition right. hyperbolic tangent right. square and actually what we observed is that the solution stayed con con regular so also in the derivatives. And then the discontinuity would arise actually at the same critical time you calculated pi over four, yeah. and the and the derivative at the um, at, uh, at the vacuum point would would jump at pi over four. Yeah. So you have a different yeah. 
yeah, yeah. It's so, also so a mechanism I, somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With... I, I can comment about that actually. Uh, so I mentioned if you start with uh, analytic initial data, okay, the whole machinery, of course, is not a parabola. But if you look at the uh, the um, uh, anal analytic initial data, means that you have a power series, right? Yeah. 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 And the radius of conversion, of course, you don't know. You know initially, but you don't know a priori how it's going to develop in time. And okay, uh, so if you start with a um, set square or whatever uh, mm -hmm. hyperbolic tangent for for psi, really, mm -hmm. right? Um, then you have an analytic initial data, okay? And you can actually see the cascade of uh, so the, it's a, it's a it's a hierarchy of equations for the coefficients. You start with the the, the first, which is the because the symmetry is going to be the the quadratic part, mm -hmm. and those feed in uh, on the others other other uh, evolution of the other uh, coefficient. I don't have the slide here, but I can show it to you actually. Uh, mm -hmm. Whatever, and it's it's interesting because all the other ones are linear, mm -hmm. so you know that uh, uh, you don't develop a singularity in five time because of uh, uh, because of the higher order terms, okay? Mm -hmm. So the only way to actually develop a singularity is through, through shocks, but otherwise the, the core will be will be staying put essentially. So what happens is your radius of conversion is shrinking in time, mm -hmm. okay? And so the, the, the validity of the asymptotics and asymptotic uh, power series, right, uh, analyticity is actually the greatest one is, is shrinking. It, it coincides, by the way, with the, with the position of the shock that it also, by the way. That's a work in progress also. Okay, so I don't know if I answered your question, but I think what I'm trying to say is that absolutely. So the, the parabola is, is what happens, of course, locally, and is driving, so to speak, the show. Yeah. And hence, Whatever happens for the parabola is really the collapse of the parabola that you observe also with analytic initial data. Mm -hmm. If shocks don't develop, mm -hmm. okay, shocks can develop, and then a different mechanism can be applied mm -hmm. for for uh, but, but not not for for for, for the NLS. Don't have shocks. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's jump in the de derivative of the yeah. at the at the bottom. Yeah, and, this is locally the parabola. So yeah. <laughs> But you have it showed, if I understand, a different mechanism where an extra uh, discontinuity in the derivative travels down to the right. exactly. seems a different. I exactly. mean, it looks like a different thing. Exactly, it's it's a, it's a different thing because now the discontinuity is is traveling uh, to, to 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 the zero point, mm -hmm. right? And that's mm -hmm. that's a, absolutely it's a different mechanism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very good. So, yeah, I, um, yeah, yeah. I'll try to understand. That. Okay, the parabola. Uh, so, right. Let me let me show you this because it's like, this thing probably went too fast. Yeah, right here. See, the two points in front of the inner point, right, mm. are colliding, right, exactly when the parabola is 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 uh, is is. Uh, zero thickness essentially, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if you want to call it who, who's, who's ch chicken leg type thing, right? Mm -hmm. The collision happening because the parabola is forcing the, the parabola to be to be mm -hmm. one dimensional, or is it the, the, the parabola driving the two the two points together essentially? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just so happens that it's, it's, it's that number anyway, square root of uh, one over square root of the curvature, pi over four, and like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Questions? Yeah, it's in a long way, your equation where in a long way approximation. And if you have the cone, then it's not a long way at all. Like I said, no reason for the effectiveness. Absolutely not. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, it would be correct to say, I mean, if there is distortion, of course, there is really a very easy to kind of smoothen the disorders. Yeah. yeah. But uh, the the kind of law which you persist. Yes. So so I mean, you can see it here, right? Maybe it's not exactly distortion. Okay. It's, this uh, is okay. Is it is it full equations? Yeah. Full. Full of it. Full of it. The American right? Absolutely. And, and, and something else as well, right? So it is it is a directing like the simulations. Starting with the corner, and of course the corner doesn't persist. 
Ez volt én azt mondta, szerintem ezt nagyon a falra. A jelenlegen vissza, de az egyetlen. Yeah. So it's basically, I mean, it, it, it is simplified that it is. It's like a deletion of two down breaks, but they are not three one type down breaks, but the curve of down breaks, and this is because of the curvature you have all of the speakers. Right, and in fact, actually, this is a very good point. I could also point you to a reference that we wrote about this. Um, yes, so this is a, a tangent point, right? It doesn't have a finite derivative. And people in the business of the hyperbolic uh, equation for gas, they call it an uh, unphysical vacuum. Okay. Physical vacuum has a finite derivative. So it's a dam break. In the physical vacuum type situation, absolutely. <laughs> and, uh, and, and we know that in double break problems, you don't have shocks, kind of surprise that it's kind of hard, right? And you don't have shocks here. Yeah, exactly. In the physical, yeah. in the physical vacuum. Oh. Yeah. physical, then it's a bit more Yeah. Questions? Okay, then. Thanks. Thank you.